My friends, welcome. This is Archangel. The last couple years have been an intense course in liberation philosophy. They have been some of the deepest, most introspective of my life. You see, I have had innumerable experiences in my life of being devalued because I was born with a certain little genetic deficiency, a Y chromosome. So I went through hell because of this. Yet only in the last few years have I been able to mate experience with enlightened contemplation. But what allowed me to make that leap? What is the difference that allowed me to go beyond blue pill? What suddenly caused clarity and brought reason to rhyme? What is the key to my red pill awakening? Quite simply, abstinence from females. Not a couple weeks or a few months, but years. You have to remove yourself from your crutch to gain the fabled hindsight. You can't logically assess your addiction with a needle still stuck in your arm. You can't fix the flat tire while you are sitting in the driver's seat, nice and warm next to the heater and enjoying the radio. You have to get out of the car in the blowing snow to do anything about it. Likewise, removing yourself from sexual relations long enough to get a neutral point of observation over the effects that females and gynocentrism induces upon other males, this is all you need to realize that the sexuality that females peddle is not worth your time or effort. Sex, it is so overrated. It is a few seconds of rebel yell, a few seconds of female-assisted ejaculation, <sighs> woo hoo yet everything that you have to go through to get that few seconds it is so not worth it look at it in terms of financial investment in these terms your investment would actually be depreciating you would be losing money on your investment if you were to compare returns or profit and dividends juxtaposed to your total investment you know I never thought I I would espouse abstinence. I mean, sex and the exchanges therein was the holy grail of romance that I had bought into most of my life. Sex is a foundational reason that I actually detest organized religion, because religion has tried to legislate sexuality and shame people over their bodies and guilt people into repression of an act that is natural. Now, yes, I still have a keen interest in sex, sexuality, sensuality, and all various forms of kink that humans indulge in, not from an arousal point of view, but rather from a curiosity point of view for what humans dream up and indulge in, and the complete animals they relinquish themselves to while they are in these sexual acts. Moreover, I like the imagination behind some people's interests. I figure psh, anything is game between consenting adults. And a loving God would not have created sexual pleasure only to have it legislated through robed or suited old white dudes for the purposes of entrapping humans into punishment if they indulge in certain acts at certain times with certain people. So, because I was so thoroughly indoctrinated with romance culture from a young age, and thus, of course, I was enamored with sex, and because of my interest in sex and the religious suppression of it, this caused me to reject the brainwashing of dogmatic religions. And I thank God for that, because religion is just as BS as female exaltation. Even though I have keen interest in pleasure, specifically male pleasure, because males do not get enough pleasure since they are whipping boys for society, and so I came to realize that sexual relations with females is the method by which males sign their death warrants. Sex is the method by which males subjugate themselves, their labor, their very lives to females who do not care about their tender feelings or romantic sentiments. So the awakened, the male empowerment warriors, they have a conundrum. Do they continue to pursue sex and be an accomplice, a co-conspirator in male devaluation and disposal, or do they stop elevating and chasing vagina and tear up the death warrant that sex with females necessarily compels? I understand this. Just because we are awakened does not mean we enjoy sex or pleasure any less than the blue pill male. But we can see that it causes so much suffering and continues the male bloodshed and expendability that we rail against. So what do we do? I mean, if we wanted sex to cause pain, we could embark upon an imaginative S&M session. 
Oh, I have had much introspection upon this subject, and I conclude that I am either part of the problem or part of the solution. By chasing and placating, pandering and doing anything to solicit sex from females, I essentially contribute to and sanction male disposability, which I do not. Now, many males will theorize that they can still have sex without contributing to male disposability if the females come to them and offer them sex, after which the females quickly leave upon act completion. So there is no cuddling or release of oxytocin, which causes male bonding to the female. And this also presupposes that there is no pregnancy involved or inappropriate allegations such as rape, which will also ensnare the male. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of presuppositions. And really, how many males actually get this treatment? Rock stars and movie stars notwithstanding. And even they are not immune. They still get hit up with lawsuits and alimony and huge divorce settlements. No male is immune to females predation upon sexual act completion. Hmm, this is quite the quandary, isn't it? Amidst epiphany, I realized the solution. The bearers of wizard sleeves are the executioners of males, whether unknowingly or indirectly, or whether with conscious premeditated impunity. The solution is simple, and it is one that males will scream in terror against. Stop sexual interactions with females. I stopped chasing vagina and sexual interactions with females some time ago. And since I am not gay, essentially I assumed abstinence while trying not to think of this celibacy thing as celibacy. I pretended to myself that this was only a temporary condition until I could find a unicorn. <laughs> I have observed the reality of females and the sex that they peddle and male servitude to them with amazing clarity. And that is why now me, Mr. Anything Sex, espouses abstinence from sexual interactions with females. Not because sex is bad or physical pleasure is sinful, but because the way it is currently practiced, it hurts males and lowers their worth to that of disposable shovels, Kleenexes to be used and thrown away. This is unacceptable. Some ideals are more important than chasing a couple seconds of fun, and rising up against male abuse and disposability is one of those ideals. I encourage abstinence of sexual interaction with females as the quickest, most immediate remedy to male subjugation to female slave masters. I don't condemn sexual pleasure. You can still masturbate. I simply realize that sexual solicitation by males to females causes all the problems of male devaluation. Still, for heteros, masturbation is the same as abstinence. Oh, I know, masturbation is a pale equivalent to actual sex, like settling for a glass of room temperature water after knowing the taste of an ice-cold creamy milkshake. However, when you understand the torment and torture you will have to go through for a little sip of milkshake, you will get down on your knees and thank the universe for that blessed, beautiful glass of pure, lukewarm water. At least you are free and empowered as you drink the water. The rest of the gender slaves their lives away, paying for the few drops of milkshake that they were allowed in the beginning of the relationship. After which, it's all honeydews. Go to work. And no more toys or friends or money or vitality. It's pretty much supporting an individual female or the collective through taxation and service or chivalry. Then you die. That is the cost of milkshakes. I cannot overemphasize the importance of abstinence. It's the difference between red pill liberation and purple pill purgatory. And actually, sexual relinquishment really was not that hard at all. Once I made male empowerment and liberation a priority, rejection of the meat grinder sexuality with females was an organic eventuality. In fact, I began this move even as I was stripping and females were offering me vagina everywhere I turned. Instead, I decided to manipulate and twist them with the sex. The same sex that they offered to me. The same sex that they likely usurped other males' utility with. That indeed was the true test. Rejecting sex that chased me and offered itself to me. 
However, I realized myself as a warrior, even then, an avenger from males against the vaginasty. So I did not weaken or give in, even as I had ladyberries and clam hampers dancing in front of my face. Anyhow, I have been female sexual interaction free for some years now, and I found as the time passed, I came to take pride in my born again status. I am a liberation warrior, practicing what I preach. I walk the walk of what I espouse other men to embrace. It's no coincidence that my brilliance blossomed just as I was eschewing interactions with females. And I embrace the born-again virginity status as an accurate title rather than somebody who simply has a couple weeks or a few months of a dry spell in between females. Despite all the shaming tactics of the gynocentric drones, I take fierce pride in my abstinence as an alcoholic boasts of the time that they have remained alcohol-free. Moreover, it means so much more to me than simple exemption from male disposability. My born-again virginity status is a huge middle finger to gynocentrism and the vaginasty. It is me striking a blow for the abused, suffering males everywhere, and it is the clarity I needed to finally rail against male disposability. Most males lament dry spells and eagerly look forward to their next piece. Many male empowerment warriors, or MGTOW, have come here posting videos during their dry spells and as soon as a female said hi, boom, their messages change or their content is deleted. And during these dry spells, in between vaginas, they beat themselves and their worth into the ground because their identity still clings to females. They are nothing without the physical affirmation or validation of a lubricated vagina. Yet, the longer I abstained, the more pride I found in myself, in my abilities, in my skills and talents and beauty. Then, amazingly, I found myself valuing my sexuality more, more than merely wasting myself on cheap, insincere female-assisted ejaculations. I entered the final stages of purple pill desperation, thinking that I would save this newfound virginity for some special unicorn who was worthy of this gift and could be trusted with such tender feelings as those within my heart. Oh, believe me, I ran the gamut from foreign females to conservative to aesthetically unconventional looking females searching for the Easter Bunny. However, at the end of the day, I found females to be... <laughs> well, female, gynocentric, self-advancing, and gender-preferenced parasites incapable of soul affection reciprocity. That was the final awakening, that there was no female out there worthy of my rebooted virginity, none worthy of this gift of my precious sexuality and feelings. Yes, I have embraced the beauty of my sex and the reality that no female is worthy of it, nor the tender feelings that I attach to it. And now, I value my new virginity more than any momentary weakness with any hot girl. No female could meet the criteria in order for me to share myself with them physically. Yeah, I may sound crazy and nonsensical talking about valuing my sexuality. But more males need to see their sexuality as special, not to be wasted on malevolent vultures that only want your utility, not your tender emotions, nor your disgusting man juice on their stomachs. Furthermore, I am so sick of all the mockery of male sexuality and ejaculation that I would not waste any of my life vitality on a female. In fact, the last few sexual encounters that I did have, I refused to ejaculate for these females. I simply faked it. Yes, actually, guys can fake it, and many do. After observing the overwhelming amounts of slander and disgust expressed over ejaculate and the act of ejaculation, I refused any further male mockery fodder at my expense. Now, if you are still having sex with females, refuse to ejaculate around them. It will drive them crazy and give you the upper hand, since they use your ejaculation as a roadmap. Okay, all right. Whew, finally, you came. Good. I can stop pretending to like your hairy, smelly body on top of me and your primal thrusting. And now, you have a list of chores to do. You have protection and utility to provide me. So get it done, man-ape. You must know the difference between involuntary virginity and virginity by choice. 
Oh, I could absolutely go out and get any female I wanted because I understand them, their motivations and drives, and I know more about them than pickup artists do. And if I wanted sex, oh, pss, please, I could absolutely have it. However, I choose my born-again virginity. I choose not to feed male devaluation and disposability. I choose water over milkshake. I choose to starve the vaginasty of my magnificence and help males heal rather than contribute to their wounds. I have higher purpose, but I do not claim perfection. I'm not saying I don't look at porn occasionally or that I don't take extra long showers. Yet in retrospect, I found that I have had more intellectual expansion during my abstinence than all the years before it while chasing the sexual grail and the female lure around the track over and over and over. I can easily understand how genius is encouraged by sexual eschewment. Tesla, Da Vinci, Pythagoras, even Freud, while married, practiced celibacy. And I can finally behold the wisdom in this. I have had deeper, more profound musings and introspections during the past few years of sexual rebucation than in all the time I was a blue pillar chasing female approval and validation, hoping for salvation from my cursed state as a male. It's not coincidence that the world-shaking, paradigm-shifting brilliance throughout history came through MGTOW-minded males, or males that abstained from chasing females and sex. It's not the actual sex that is detrimental. Indeed, it has positive, health-affirming effects on the body and soul, in moderation. The problem arises with males. They can't seem to keep emotion out of the mechanical actions of procreation. They turn a few seconds of good time into a mortgage and hungry mouths to feed by slaving away at a soul-crushing job. Males become addicts and devote their energy and channel their creativity into thinking about and chasing the next few seconds of female-assisted ejaculation. You either nurture your brilliance and seek liberation from gynocentrism, or you serve the vaginasty, pandering and placating and prostrating yourself before females to get your five seconds of milkshake and that pat on the head from the mommy collective that you are being a good boy. So do not pity me. My rebooted virginity is a point of pride. It is a choice. It is what took me to the next level of advancement. It is the genesis of my evolution to the next stage of existence. In fact, I pity those who are still chasing sex. <laughs> Furthermore, my reborn virginity is me thumbing my nose at the vaginasty. Guess what? You have nothing that I need. Check mate. If I had my way, all males would voluntarily reject sexual relations with females in order to evolve to their next stage of advancement. Sex subjugates males to gynocentric servitude. You cannot get around this. Sex is an impediment to male power and brilliance. It is time to rise above basal instincts and desires, lest we destroy ourselves and be doomed to repeat history. We have split the atom for crying out loud. It's time for us to advance and live from our frontal lobe and not simply chase our lizard brain instincts. We can't afford to react from our reptilian programming. We have too many dangerous toys to act ignorantly and throw temper tantrums or simply chase sex and feed male disposability because we are not disciplined enough to practice self-control over our thoughts or actions, but rather we allow our desires to lead us. This is unacceptable, gentlemen. I am proud of my newfound virginity. If nothing else, it demonstrates that one male was strong enough to reject male disposability. And though my example may have no effect on the mass populace, it demonstrates that one male made a stand against male devaluation. And that gives me honor on behalf of the abused and discarded males throughout history. I am a born-again virgin and I am stronger than ever. My brothers, experience this clarity for yourself. Stand with me, live free.